Let's speak to Dan Hodges, columnist for the Mail on Sunday, uh, getting his thoughts on the whole Dominic Cummings situation. Dan, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks very much indeed for joining us here on Talk Radio. So, um, look, we, we've heard both sides of the argument this morning uh, in respect to Dominic Cummings. Uh, it is almost, um, I suppose, admitted by all sides that however you look at it, he, he sailed very close to the winds if you want to be charitable or he simply broke the rules if not. He is causing the Prime Minister an enormous amount of embarrassment and uh, stress and difficulty at this time, even from uh, you know the, the, the Daily Mail, your sister paper, uh, where they're asking what planet they're on. Uh, it's indefensible that he stays, isn't it? No, I think it's in, entirely defensible, actually. Um, I mean, firstly, uh, he hasn't, it's very clear he hasn't broken any laws. And uh, as far as I understand, even even in the midst of our COVID crisis and what is increasingly becoming our, our COVID mania, we still are a, a nation of laws. The guidance, the specific guidance and the medical officials, this has been completely lost, but it was, conf- it was confirmed again at the press conference on Saturday And it was confirmed at the very point at which the government set out the guidance that if if, if you are in a situation where you were to have two family members come down with coronavirus and you did have a a, a child on their own, that would represent exceptional circumstances in which you could could move outside of the normal lockdown regulations. In addition to that, I understand there are specific circumstances – um, that relate to Dominic Cummings' family. So I think in all those circumstances and, 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 and all that taken together, I think it's absolutely right that, that, that he remains and the Prime Minister backs him. OK, so it's very clear, though, that there is a huge public backlash against him. How does the Prime Minister move this story on? Is there anything that he can say or do? Because clearly yesterday did not work. Is there anything that he can say or do that moves this forward and moves us back to discussing what do we do to uh, slow the, um, slowly unlock this nation as opposed to uh, talking about uh, an, uh, an unelected advisor? Yeah, I mean, I think what we need now from Boris Johnson is com- and the government is complete transparency. Um, I mean, I've been, I'm sure you have. Because we've not had that, have we? No, not yet. No, we haven't. And that's and that. And I've said consistently throughout this, although I've been broadly supportive of the government and the government's approach to coronavirus, I've consistently said the communications have been absolutely appalling. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is another example of it. But what we need now is obviously Boris Johnson told the country yesterday he'd had a long conversation with Dominic Cummings. He needs to set out in detail precisely the conversation he had precisely the circumstances surrounding what Dominic Cummings did in, in all aspects, going up to stay with his parents, the, 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 the stories we saw on, on, on Sunday about additional, additional trips. All of that needs to come out because my understanding is Dominic Cummings has a perfect, as the Prime Minister said, has a perfectly legitimate case for, for, for doing what he did. I understand Dominic Cummings is, you know, protective of his family. I understand he's protective of of his privacy. But the reality is this is a national story now. He does have a senior national position. Um, it is, as you say, doing damage to the government. It's doing, it's doing damage to confidence in the, in, in the broader coronavirus strategy so that the truth needs to come out there and all the facts need to come out there. But I think, as far as I'm aware, and obviously we'd have to wait and see what, what, what happened, as far as I'm aware, and as, as I currently understand, the most facts would, would indicate Dominic Cummings. Um, isn't one of the big problems here that Dominic Cummings appears to be adopting uh, the royal family's school of PR, which was in operation up until about 10 years ago, which was uh, never complain, never explain. Uh, he's just not interested in engaging. He's left the prime minister to pick up his jobs. It should be the other way around. Uh, and this is supposed to be somebody who's in charge of government comms and is making a total hash of it. No, I mean, I think that's a, that's a fair criticism. I think, that, I think actually that has been a criticism that, that, that I and others have made, have made about Dominic Cummings, though, just about ever since he's been in, been in Downing Street. This is his attitude. This is the way he operates. He has an incredibly arrogant um, way of engaging with the media. He thinks the media don't care. He doesn't think, he, as you say, he doesn't think 
he or anyone in government really needs to needs to apologise or explain for anything. So as I say, on the communication side, I completely I completely agree with all your criticism. But I think that is separate from, and I think it it is an important point here. And I, and I say I do think now we are going completely mad in terms of how we are letting coronavirus just completely dominate everything and drag us away from what is our, our, our basic humanity as a society. This was a father doing the best thing for his child, both within the law and within the guidelines. And when we get to the point that we've got now, where I'm sure you and your listeners have seen the pictures of Dominic Cummings, so-called neighbours, hanging out of windows, abusing the guy in the street, taunting the guy in the street. When we've reached that point, we've gone, we've gone too far. And I think we need to stop and I think we need to step back. And I think we need to realise that I, I know what a major crisis this is, but there are more important things for us as a society and as individuals than simply not trying to catch coronavirus. Is there, is, just finally to you, Dan, is this partly uh, prismed by the fact that Dominic Cummings is seen as the architect of Brexit? There are a lot of people who are very un- unhappy about that uh, and, and therefore would like to frame him and indeed the Prime Minister. And they don't really care whether or not he broke the rules. Here is an opportunity just to go uh, in another way, politically motivated, at somebody who uh, was just getting on and doing their job. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt about it this morning. I mean, what, what's, what's amazed me is the number of normally sort of rational and compassionate people um, from what I would sort of loosely describe as the liberal left who have completely lost their mind over this and, and, and who consistently completely lose their mind over Dominic Cummings. And that's actually part of Dominic Cummings' genius because he drives his opponents mad and he's done so. Again, I would say, however, in this instance, there's absolutely no doubt that this, do- that this does appear to be having cut through to the wider public, which is why I think we need more detail and more transparency from Dominic Cummings and the Prime Minister on what has actually occurred here.